What is up everyone? I am still here in Anaheim, California. Yesterday I went to Fujiwara Tofu Shop and the Tuna Evil Show at the Anaheim Convention Center. I usually stay at this hotel right here on Garden Grove Boulevard. Very good price. Uh, I'll leave the link in my description so you can check out this hotel. Right now I'm about to head to Riverside, California to go and pick up the alternator for my R32. So I had a choice between LS conversion or I decided to go with the OEM fitting one from DC Power. Talked to the sales rep. He gave me some some good contrast between going LS or DC power and I decided to go with DC power because it's made right here in the USA and plus if I ever need help then they can uh, definitely give me some pointer as well so let's go and check out DC powers Alright guys, so I'm here at DC Power and Riverside. Just grabbing my cameras, get everything ready. So they are right over there, that building right there. That wasn't a bad of a drive, up the 55 to 91 and to Riverside. Uh, we start off here with the machining. Alright. Uh, these are all our paws. Wow. Two legs back there. So everything's made from scratch, then, huh? Everything's made from scratch. So this couple days ago, this is what your alternator looked like. Oh, okay. Just throw them in the legs right here. Okay. And they'll come out like this. So this would be like the the starting platform before they go into the mill. All right. So how long does it take to make one? Like for example, like the R32 alternator. Um, to make one, um, Alfred. Time like on a 15R, for example. 15R, 10 minutes. Yeah. Minutes. So, yeah. So it'll probably be like a good 10 minutes on that side, a good 10 minutes on this side, uh -huh. and then once it's once it's all done machining here, then we'll go to our assembly side over here. Generally, a thicker slug. If you have different size slugs, like you have eight inch, uh, eight and a half, nine uh -huh. inch, nine inch thick. Um, so yeah, but everything was designed in house for them. Uh, obviously, we took in, uh, you know an OEM one and took the uh, measurements off of that to be able to make what we make. You okay. know what I mean? The idea behind it is to make sure that it's a bolt-on replacement for you know for oh, guys God. who just want who are looking for an alternate replacement. At first I was trying to rebuild them and they had comfortable places. As soon as they need some skyline, you're like, oh we don't do it no more. Yeah yeah. They don't want to touch it no more. Yeah. And so I was looking online and uh, I went to the NorCal Skyline group and they were like all right, well, why don't you just do the conversion, the LS conversion? Yeah. But then I say, you know what? I, I don't want to be taking things off, put things on. Yeah. I prefer OEM bolt on. Right. And then somebody uh, comment that DC powers. That's why I Googled you guys and then contact you guys about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is like you can't really find good alternators anymore for like, especially the older 90s cars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So. Uh, like right now, our number one customer is RX7s, FBs. Wow. Because okay. um, you can't find those in the junkyard anymore either. You might find like an FB or an FC every once in a while, get uh -huh. that alternator, take it yes. to rebuilt. Uh -huh. But now you're taking it to rebuilt, get rebuilt, and it's either going to go one or two ways. You're going to get some probably aftermarket parts uh -huh. somewhere. It's going to last you, you know, maybe last you for a little bit. Uh -huh. But you know, usually the return rates on those are pretty high for a guy for rebuilds. Yeah. And then another one. You know, people think like, well, I want I want a high output one, but I want to take my original one yeah. and make it higher output. Yeah. The problem with that is you get the top end like 200 amps or 250. Yeah. But when you stop at a red light, you get no output. Wow. That means like it literally will go from 14 volts to 12 volts, and there's just yeah. no. And so, guys who basically run that 
Tesla style of alternators, you'll hear a lot about that saying, oh yeah, like I'm heat soaking, uh, my car's running a little hotter in traffic, I don't know yeah. why, but as soon as I go, I'm cool. Yeah. And that's because the alternator can't produce enough current at low end to get those fans to pull as much air as they need to. Yeah. So it's yeah. a whole big thing, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just, and we're trying to be able to service a lot of those older cars too, you know, the Skylines, we're working on the Mitsubishi, like the DSM. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll do the C18 DET too, you know, um, just a couple different ones. Um, so just kind of be able to provide the service for those guys. Uh -huh. So now let's kind of finish the first stop. And so what he'll do is he'll come in here and he'll flip it over and then it'll actually finish the whole uh, the whole front end portion of it. Wow, so okay. once it's actually done here, uh -huh. go over here. Okay. And it'll be, this is be the finished product for uh -huh. the, the housing made specifically for the style of alternator like this one would be like a 270 amp okay alternator so don't have their own specific look then huh? yeah and it, this would be like for a ford bronco like the brand new ones okay the 2.7 liter is there like a specific reason why uh you guys create that look heat conduction release um, or the main reason why is uh -huh. because uh we use a specific style of stator and components in the alternator okay so if you're familiar with nissan Nissan uh -huh. primarily used a lot of Mitsubishi, and there was another company, um, Hitachi. Yeah. And so the stator diameters are different between Mitsubishi and Hitachi, so you can't change those parts in between each other, right? I see, I see. So um, the parts that we use um, are specific, and they have a specific stator size. Uh -huh. And so that means that we can't take your RV housing and put it on one of our stators. Uh, we see. have to machine housing for it because you know, Nissan never intended for, you know, like a company to be like, okay, we're going to make alternators, so we might as well make these housings. No, we yes. had to literally make these housings in order to fit. Wow, okay. Now, the aesthetics portion of it is just a bonus, a bonus aspect to it, okay, you know what I mean? Cool, so cool. now, like, you have, a, like, you have these ones. Maybe these are very popular. This is actually for a Jay-Z. Oh, okay. What the is it because of the color purple? Or? Yeah, everyone <laughs> likes the purple HKS color. You know? Yeah, HKS color. So that, that's the big thing. And so you'll you get a lot of guys that, you know, uh -huh. they want black or they yeah. want purple. Uh -huh. Very popular colors. Okay. Uh, For me, I just want the car to run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you don't want to you, you don't want to be yanking an alternator out all the time. Yeah. Because, you know, they come with lifetime warranties. But I always tell people, like, how many times are you going to change it yeah. before you get tired of changing them? And then, like, where are you going to be the next time you need a lifetime warranty? Like, if you're going to Button Willow or something like that, yeah. and auto parts are next to you, like, what good is that lifetime warranty? If you, so we'll go to our assembly side over here. And a lot of stuff we'll do by hand, like, uh, like we make these spacer, these brackets right here that go in the back of your alternator. Okay. And we'll, t we'll literally take uh, an aluminum spacer and we'll machine it by hand. Wow. Pretty much for every order right now. Okay. Uh, so a lot of hand, a lot of hand work goes into these things still. Okay. So the alternator I'm getting today, it just basically bolts right on with no. Uh, yeah, it's meant to bolt right on with no, uh, uh, with no modification. You at still all. use the same belt. You, okay. uh, the only thing you do have to do with high output alternators is uh -huh. you want to make sure you run a bigger power wire. I'm sure your Skyline still has a battery in the front, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'll go over that in a little bit. Okay, yeah, please. So these are the stators that we use. Okay. Everything's brand new. Nothing is remanufactured in any way. Mm -hmm. um, it's just kind of one of the things that we kind of really we base our business off of is we want everything to be brand new mm -hmm. we want you to have an alternator that's not that doesn't have any miles on it you know what i mean yeah because yes. you'll get companies that will sell you remanufactured units and yes. they won't even tell you it's remanufactured yes. that's the biggest thing And so alternate RPM, your battery voltage, you'll see me kind of manipulate that as needed, mm -hmm. you know? And this is your amps. Uh, this is your ripple current right here. Kind of tells us how noisy the alternator is, um, or if it's hurt. You can kind of really hear an alternator when it's not working properly. Okay. And, you, and you just made that right now? Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Awesome. But what I really want to go see is Magnus Walker's uh, Porsche uh, warehouse. Oh, okay. That's what I want to see, you know? Our alternators, normally come with a GM plug mm -hmm. okay uh, and that's because companies like Nissan and Subaru didn't mm -hmm. plan on ever having somebody make an alternator for their platform right yes so as we we try to make everything plug and play yeah. so this plugs into our alternator right here okay and then this side plugs into your factory harness mm -hmm. so if you notice that if you notice on the OEM alternator your OEM alternator is always a male side mm -hmm. and then whatever comes off your vehicle's harness is a female side mm -hmm. so we have these made so that they plug into your 
female side and you don't have to cut or splice anything. Wow, okay. So that way so it it's just, just kind of extends it, huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it extends it and adapts it. That way you don't have to cut, you don't have to splice. Yes. And then it starts, things start getting messy after that. And then this always comes in a little white box. Some okay. people, you, would, you would imagine how many people skip over this white box because they, they see their alternator and they get super excited. And and it hey, is. it doesn't fit. I go check the box again. <laughs> so have you ever heard of a thing called the big three setup? No, I never did. Okay. So it's very popular in car audio terminology. Okay. So basically what we're looking at is when you run a high output alternator, okay. you want to make sure you upgrade your battery cable. Okay. I'm very sorry for the messy shot, but no worries. the reason why is when you, your factory battery cable is probably like a four gauge, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it goes through a 75 amp fuse for the alternator. So what happens when a 180 amp alternator throws 180 amp at a 75 amp fuse? It's going to blow the fuse. So what we do is we make a kit, it's a universal kit that adds a, power, a battery cable to the back of the alternator directly mm -hmm. to the battery. So the way that this works is you go from the back of the alternator okay. to an inline fuse and then from the fuse it goes directly to the positive terminal on your battery. Then you add the negative terminal to the battery. You can go back to the engine block or you can go back to the chassis. Yeah, because under under the intake arm, there's a bolt for that right. negative. There. And you can go there too, okay. as long as you have an upgraded wire. And what that basically does mm -hmm. is it, allow the, it allows the higher current to take a path directly to the battery instead of going through that fuse. Mm -hmm. So the inline fuse is that the stock one or you or uh, no? Let me uh, <coughs> let me show you. I actually forgot to grab it. But, okay. Um, here. Okay. And then I have a nice little casing for it. So let me go grab that. Okay. Yeah, he he came by and uh, showed him around a little. Bit. So the way that this normally goes, one side attaches to. Let's say it's a side here. That goes on there like that, and that goes on there like that. So it looks like a pretty simple setup, but a uh, really important setup. Very important setup. Yeah, yeah this is going to make sure that you don't burn through your factory cable and you don't burn and you don't pop your fuse because mm. the last thing you want to do is pop a fuse. You know, you know, we try to make it as easy as possible for people. That way, they're not uh, they're not stressing. You know, mm. so this side goes to the alternator. This side goes to your battery, mm -hmm. and then just make sure that you know you tighten this down so that it's not moving. It's not moving but once around. you have it in place where you want it. Okay. And so they call it the big three. And the reason why they call it the big three, one wire, two wire, three wire. Okay. And yeah, that's basically, you're not removing the factory cable. You're not getting rid of that. You're basically just adding this on to what already exists. Exists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're going straight to the battery. So straight from the alternator to the battery. Yep. And then you still hook up your factory cable, your factory battery cable too. To the alternator as well. Yeah. The terminals that attach to the batteries okay. are a pain in the butt. Oh yeah, yeah. So these are military top posts. Mm -hmm. uh, they sell them on Amazon, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, those, I mean, I, would have probably, I probably wouldn't mind getting on Amazon, but we do offer them here too. Okay. And so basically what it allows for, if you want to add like an additional you know cable like this Just plug right there, it huh? gives you more room yeah you know what i mean and you know the nissans do have like a little fuse on the end of the battery cable yeah and, and you know you can actually drill it out a little bit and attach it to one side so that way it's in a fixed position yeah so say like sitting all like all all crunk right there yeah yeah so, yeah, so it definitely adds this because it's hard with like the 30 year old terminals they they don't tighten down well enough yeah. anymore but mm -hmm. these what I did on my on my 13 is I cut the end. I put a four, I used a four gauge butt connector mm -hmm. and I connected it to this. Okay. Cool. And um, yeah, and then you get and you can also get one of these little covers. It yeah. basically just goes over the yeah. this right here, and then you put that on the back of your alternator. Like that. Okay. The cable kit that we offer it's a universal kit, like okay. I said. Mm -hmm. uh, so this may be a little longer for the GTR, you know, because the battery is on the passenger side, the alternator is on the passenger side. Yeah. So it may yeah. be a little longer, so you may have to run it or cut it to your size. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, when you're ready to do that long kit, uh -huh. yeah, just, just kind of, uh, you know, because most people, they're already located in the back. 
-hmm. So, you know, they don't need a kit like this, but like if you're running something pretty heavy and you have a lot of equipment, this mm -hmm. is the way to go. All right, guys, so I want to thank Anthony for, for giving me a tour today. And I'm very fortunate that I came at the right time and I got to see my uh, R32 alternator being built from scratch to the finished piece. And also Anthony was very uh, helpful in giving us tips on how to make more power with alternator and maintaining it as well. So I want to thank you, Anthony, for taking some of your time to explain the, the build, the numbers and everything. So yeah. anything else you want to say to your, um, to the audience out there? Uh, no, I mean, it, other than just thank you guys. If you guys have supported us in the past, we really mm -hmm. appreciate it. Uh, we're a small business here in Riverside, California, and we're just trying to give, you know, make the best product that we can for everybody in their cars. We know how much uh, money you guys spilled on, spend on your cars mm -hmm. and you know, that's all hard earned money. And uh, we just think think of it as car guys, you know what I mean? We're mm -hmm. car guys trying to spend money on our cars. Mm -hmm. So when we build something and we ship something out, mm -hmm. we want that same quality that we expect when we buy from other companies, you know? And I think it's important to maintain that quality in the car community. So thank you again for coming by. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you guys have any questions, just email us, call us, and we'll be happy to answer all your questions. So one more thing is, uh, do you guys take walk-ins or especially just, is it only just uh, internet sales? Uh, we do take walk-ins. Mm -hmm. uh, just know that if you walk in, it's it's a pretty high chance that we won't have the alternator available. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as far as like, we have to build it. I mean, you'll see in the video that yeah. we, we have to build it. But if you want to buy from us, say, hey, uh, I want to buy from you. I'll send you an invoice. That way you don't have to pay, pay for shipping. Mm -hmm. You can come pick it up chat about it i'll show you the i'll show you the yeah. shop i have no problem doing that mm -hmm. um but yeah you can walk in and, and buy from us directly okay so for all the k20 swap guys in fresno anthony's the man and he will definitely take your car to the next level sometime we made the mistake of not looking at the alternator and the power all we think we're just gonna make more horsepower but uh after today's visit i'm convinced that you know maybe your alternator could be one of the things that could help boost you as well so anthony did give us something uh, detail about that so that was really good yeah yeah it's it's the last thing anybody ever thinks about mm -hmm. if they think about the alternator last oh it works does it though does it really work <laughs> so yeah you'll find out but yeah like it's it's just kind of one of those things it is a key component man so yeah definitely cool. check us out all right anthony thank you very much yeah no problem right. thank you all right so i just picked up the alternator and he hooked it up with the wires and plus look at that dude two of logs oh my alternator that's pretty sick can't wait to go home and put this on and start doing some more videos and like again dc power right here and Riverside, California. So if you want to upgrade your, your alternator, make more horsepower or maintain, maintain your power, definitely this is places to go.